All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the basic fundamentals of GraphQL and why you should consider using GraphQL over REST. We'll dive into the fundamentals of how GraphQL works internally and how you can use it in your applications today. So what is GraphQL? GraphQL is an open source query language for your API, which allows clients to fetch exactly what they need from the server in a declarative manner. And in order to understand what exactly does it mean, let's open up the GraphQL playground for Pokemon's API, which will let me interact with the API for Pokemon's, which is written in GraphQL. And what we are seeing on the left here is a simple GraphQL query. And here I am trying to fetch uh, the first five Pokemon's, their IDs, numbers, and name and image. I can change them accordingly as per my needs. And this is what GraphQL is about. If tomorrow my frontend doesn't need their names, I can just get rid of it from here and fetch it again. And I should have ID, number, and image for first five Pokemons right over here. Now, if you compare this with their uh, respective REST API, you can see that we'll have a problem of overfetching there, where uh, in order to fetch details of certain Pokemons, we'll first have to fetch their IDs, and then based on their IDs, we'll have to make requests to the respective REST endpoint to get desired information about a certain Pokemon. Um, it could be their uh, skills or species or their moves and abilities, anything based on our requirements. So what GraphQL lets me do is as a front-end engineer, it'll let me define uh, very declaratively what exactly does my client need uh, to get my application up and running. Now you must be wondering, how does a front-end engineer know what can be fetched over uh, the GraphQL spec? You can definitely refer the docs, which are auto-generated by the way, from the schema that you define at the backend for the entire GraphQL spec. And from there, you can just refer the type of things that will be returned from all of these uh, queries. So if I go to Pokemons, I know I can get a type of a Pokemon which has all these properties and I can just browse through them uh, based, based on my needs. So if I come back here and try to refer other properties, let's say, um, one of my mobile app needs the height and weight of all these Pokemon on the first screen. Um, I can just go and get these details from over here. So it'll be minimum and maximum. And uh, now I have the details to show in my mobile application that the Bulbasaur Pokemon has a minimum weight of 6.04 kg and a maximum weight of 7.76 kg. Now, if we were to replicate a similar behavior with REST, will be running into the issues with overfetching where my response size will be huge because I can't filter through these properties whether I want the weights or not because if I'm hitting Pokemon slash one, I will get its weights by default. Now you must be wondering how does it exactly work? So GraphQL lets you define your entire spec via a schema and you make queries against that schema as we just saw and you get your, your the, exactly the amount of data that you need at the client from your server. Now, besides these advantages of trimming down this overfetching, which comes with REST, why else should you consider uh, using GraphQL over REST? Now, we have a really good example of combining nested queries together with GitHub GraphQL Explorer that we have over here. Notice how I have a query called user, which takes in the username and gives me the avatar URL of uh, the desired user. So I have my user uh, name plugged in here, Meta Grover, and I'm fetching my avatar URL. So if I go to my GitHub profile and look at the pin repositories that I have here. So if I need to fetch at least the first two pin repositories from my profile, I can just go further into this query and construct it in a way that I can fetch the names of the repositories that I have pinned on my profile. So I can just go to pin repositories, first two. So I can now fetch name with owner and I will have metagrower slash ES6 for humans and abyssio slash reactive search, uh, which are pinned on first two on my profile over here. All of the what we have browsed so far is profile related. And let's fetch the activity uh, that I've done on my GitHub. 
So I can get the start repositories, possibly last two, which is basically most recent, name with owner again. So if I run this query all over again, I should see that I have two results in my start repositories. Now I can go ahead and add more and more things here regarding my bio and what all issues that I've opened and everything. All of those things combined together in one query. So you can see how powerful GraphQL is and how efficiently it allows us to declaratively combine multiple queries together. Next is automated documentation. I can just look at my GraphQL Explorer and just go through the, the queries that are supported over my schema. And this is auto-generated via my schema that I have in place at the backend, which is letting me define the entire GraphQL architecture. Next, uh, no versioning is required. You can simply deprecate fields in your schema, um, which will allow the developers to take note of it and they can simply query GraphQL over one version. Now you can get more details about GraphQL at graphql.org, learn how to write GraphQL queries and build something meaningful out of it.